And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley, back again with another episode of Me, Myself, and I. I hope that you guys are doing awesome today. If you can do me a favor, if you could please subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, you know, help share it, get it out there, because the only way we're going to get any traction with this is to share, share, share. It doesn't have to cost you a thing to share. It doesn't cost you anything. Share it on your Instagram story, share it on your TikTok, repost, favorite. All those things help to push it out so more people can see it, and that's what it's all about. Shaping success is about showing people that they can be successful no matter what they do, no matter what walk of life they come from. I wanted to thank Nikki Pavlovich for being a Patreon supporter. I like to say these up front because I feel like people dive off after a couple minutes. If they can get through the whole thing, they're going to in, in at the end, they can hear some of those things. But um, it's super amazing to me that there are many people out there who support and think that they can't help in any other way, but sharing it is the easiest way to make things happen. So thank you for that, Nikki. If you guys want to be a Patreon, if you want to help the show grow, if you want to help me buy some equipment, help me get new cameras, help picture be better, help lighting be better, all those all those dollars that you support me through Patreon with or anywhere else goes to making the show better. I don't make a dime on this, but whatever extra I get, I like to put back into the show. With that being said, go check out westankersley.com. Get yourself a Move Forward shirt. They're out there, the newest shirt that I have. They say Move Forward right on them. Made by my buddy who is the host of the Hard Parking Podcast, Jay Finning. They're ready to ship. As soon as you order it, we get them out, as long as we have the color in stock. I made the mistake of adding red, which I love red, but it doesn't go with the previous logo So um, because we have red on the logo, which goes on the other shirt. So I have inventory of all those, and then I ordered some red stuff, but I need to get more red. There's a high demand for it. We'll make sure that we get more in. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer because we've got to order those shirts. So let's get started. Let's get started in here. You know, um, we have talked about the seven habits of highly effective people quite a bit now. So we started with quite a few of them. You can go back and listen to the previous episodes if you want to hear about being proactive, beginning with the end in mind, um, have a plan, you know, put first things first and then think win-win. All things that you can relate to, all things that you can think of, to help you push forward and be better every single day. And I can guarantee you, if you do these little steps over and over again, things will happen. It's interesting how I've used these things in my life a lot, right? Um, and it's interesting how things relate. So the fifth habit is called seek first to understand, then to be. And I was in a customer's house yesterday and we were talking a little bit about how long they were married, and I started to bring back, because this is how my brain works. Like, I start to relate things that people say in conversation to other things, and then just that's how I have a conversation. And it's really fun to have conversations with customers about things sometimes you can just really relate to, and, and you don't get it unless you open yourself up to that. And, and the lady said, you know, we, we were talking about window tint, and we were going to put it on our windows, and, and there was, there's four different colors. There's light, medium, dark, extra dark, right? Those are the four different colors. And... um. The husband wanted one, and the wife wanted another. Like, she wanted extra dark. He wanted to go medium. He didn't think he wanted to be able to see out, which you can see out with this tent. There's a couple different hues, but we start thinking about, like, the compromise, right? And in the end, we there's a blue hue and a gray hue of tint. She wanted extra dark. I took, I took it, and I said, you know, I don't necessarily know that this will fit with your paint scheme. Let's take a look at it. I stuck up the blue hue. And boom, everything color popped blue. So you could see the sky, you could see the clouds, you could see everything through it and not feel like it was, you know, not there, you know, or look different because the blue makes it look blue. So we talked about that and I said, you know, this is a good compromise. And she goes, you know, that is, and I've said this before on the podcast. I don't know if you heard it before, but she goes, that's, we've been married 55 years. She goes, we've learned to compromise. And I started to think in my mind about that. My wife and I have been married 23 years. And what does it take to be married that long? Right? Seek first to understand and to be. So what does it take to be married that long? So that's, that's what we're relating this to, right? There is a compromise that has to be made. And 
you have to think about what it is it worth to you. Is it worth fighting about something or is it worth trying to find a, me- a middle ground? The person that you are with, you love, you understand, you, you know, you, there was a reason why you were attracted to them. There was a reason why you married them. There was a reason why you're dating them. There's reasons why you put yourself around people. And you have to realize that, is it really worth it to just stand at your ground, right? And we think about that a lot of times. I've been married 23 years, and my parents told me, do not do that. You're too young. And I started thinking about that, and I was like, seek first to understand than to be. At that time, I was like, screw you. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to get married. I looked at what they did. They got married when they were 18. They had us. You know, my, They had my oldest brother when they were 19, 20. And then every two years after, so I was two years more, and then my little brother was two years after me. So six years of kids, they were, you know, raising us. They were struggling because money was tight. They didn't have the funds to do those things. And I just kind of dissected what they did with their marriage. They've been married for over 40 years now, but they got married when they were young. Well, I was trying to understand this. Like when I was younger, it was like, screw you, no big deal. But I started thinking about this as I was talking to this couple. My mom and dad struggled, right, to raise three kids. Back in the 80s, they made, you know, I think like minimum wage was like three bucks an hour. Um, they maybe made a little bit more than that. And I may be completely wrong on that, but I know that in Idaho, like minimum wage used to be five fifteen when I was in high school. So I'm assuming it must have been much lower. They were in California. It was a little bit, you know, the pay was probably a little bit more back then, but I'm not certain. I just know they weren't making a ton of money. And someone asked me the other day, actually, uh, Dana Batman on TikTok was talking about how Minimum wage in Georgia is five fifteen. The net federal minimum wage is seven twenty five, but you can do whatever you want as as a state, right? Could you live on five fifteen? Now, I make pretty decent money. I've worked really hard to do that. You know, I've been through a bunch of different careers. I've been to college. I got degrees. Could you live on five fifteen an hour right now? If you go to McDonald's right now, what does it cost for you to buy a hamburger? And not everyone goes to McDonald's, right? But think about that. What does it cost to buy a hamburger at McDonald's right now? I think I was at Carl's Jr. probably a month ago, and it cost me ten fifty six for a Western bacon cheeseburger meal. Ten fifty six. Ten years ago, when my wife and I were married, when ten years ago before, we'd go to Carl's Jr. a lot. I was overweight quite a bit, still a little overweight, and we'll talk about that a little later. But we would go to Carl's Jr. once or twice a week. Five bucks. Five bucks for a double Western bacon cheeseburger meal. Seven bucks if I wanted to get chili cheese fries. At the time, I made probably $18 an hour. So as a, as a tire technician, right? And my wife is a nurse, so, well, CNA or LP, like she kind of made the, the trajectory of I was an LPN, a CNA, or no, I'm sorry, CNA, LPN, RN, RN with a bachelor's. So she's, you know, she's made that trajectory over and over again, and her wages kind of go up here and there, but they're not, they're not what they should be. Our nurses are highly underpaid and not well taken care of. As a matter of fact, when a traveling nurse comes in, they make like double the money that a person who works at the actual hospital makes, and that is definitely not fair. Whole nother story. Five bucks, okay? Now, if I was still making that same wage, there's no damn way I would go pay $10 for a hamburger. No way. But that's what it's come to. That's what this world has come to. That's where we are at. Now, thinking back and relating that to my parents, I was sitting there thinking about that. Okay, so you got five people in your family. You go to McDonald's and you spend five bucks a person. That's a lot of money, especially when you're making $5.15 an hour. So you think about that. $5.15 an hour, say it was 20 bucks for five burgers or five meals. If you got the meal, I'm sure we just got like the burgers or just a burger and fry because you can afford the whole thing. But say it was 25 bucks. That's five hours of work to pay for that meal. Okay. And then you could say, oh, yeah, let's go, let's go to the store and we'll get all the shit to make it ourselves, right? Let's do that. Well, you can, and it might be a little bit less money, but you still have to buy all the parts and pieces to make that. And I don't know if you've looked at, like, meat and things like that lately. It ain't cheap. It's not cheap anymore. Hamburger, you know, pretty expensive. Everything is going up in price. So they struggled, right? That's the point of this whole deal. Seek first to understand, then to be. So I'm trying to understand that, and that's what I'm... That's what goes through my head, the thought process that I'm thinking about, like, why do I understand this? Why would they tell me not to get married? And it was because they struggled. They didn't want me to struggle. Same thing about college, right? 
when you don't know, and if you haven't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, you should read it. I 100% read it. You're going to learn some stuff that you don't think about. And maybe you know. Maybe you've already got this figured out. I didn't. I worked in a tire center for 11 years. I flunked out of college the first, you know, right out of high school. And then I worked in a tire center for 11 years, made good money, had benefits, had retirement, had all that stuff. My parents were mad at me because I did that. They thought that I needed to go to college in order to be successful so that I didn't have to work hard in order to make money and take care of my family. But your thought process is this, right? Get a job that pays well, make sure that it has health insurance, and make sure that it has retirement. Okay? Well, that thought process is great, but guess what? You're working for someone your life. And I still work for someone, but it's a little bit different. But you work for someone. You're working for the man. You're doing all the things that they want you to do. And they're providing you with, hopefully, something at the end of your life so that you can just hang out and coast, right? Not anymore, because that money is not the same, right? But that's the thing. Like, you, you sell your soul to this person so that and, I, and that sounds really drastic, but it's the truth. Like you sell your soul to the company that you work for so that you can be stable because you're looking for stability, right? And a lot of you may be stuck in that stability point, right? So I can see where my parents were coming from when they were talking about stability. And they're like, yeah, let's, you know, get, you know, do those things. Get a job that pays you well, get benefits, get this, get that. And then why would you ever leave? Why would you not work for that same person over and over again, right? Why wouldn't you continue your employment there? Why wouldn't you do those things? Well, shit, they were 18 years old. They were working for my grandfather in a hardware store. My mom was a stay-at-home mom because, you know, you couldn't afford to pay daycare on three kids. So, at, you know, this wasn't my whole life, but this was my young, my young age, like when I was, you know, uh, one through ten, maybe. Um, after we got old enough to kind of watch ourselves, which is a different age group than it is now, like I have a nine-year-old and I'm pretty sure I was staying home alone at 10. I would not leave my nine-year-old alone. I would not leave her alone when she's 10. Maybe a lot is going to change in the next six months, but she is not ready to watch herself. So those are the things that they struggled with, right? So they're sitting there and they're looking at me and they're telling me, don't do this because it was hard for us and we don't want you to struggle. Seek first, understand, then to be. I understand now why they said what they said. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that what I did was wrong right? I understand that. I get their point of view, but it doesn't mean I have to follow it. And it doesn't mean that everything they did was wrong. In fact, they might've done some really good things. Like they have three really good kids who are highly successful and work their asses off and get shit done. But that thinking is kind of in a box. You know, when someone says think outside the box, you're thinking in the box, which is the most stable way, right? Because you're inside there, you got the walls protecting you. You can get out. So thinking about it that way, I understand where they were coming from. Do I agree with it? No, I don't. And I did some things different than my parents. My parents, they got married and they had kids. That was the thing you do. You get married, you have kids, and you get on with it. My wife and I got married, and we were. I told her, I said, we're not having kids for five years. We need to get stable. We need to graduate away college. We need to have good-paying jobs before we start to do that, right? So that was the difference. They didn't think that way. They thought, you know, they had to have kids. They had to move on. This was the things that you did. So we waited five years, right? We were doing pretty well. She was going through nursing school. I was working at the tire center. I was making good money. And she was getting her nursing degree. We made decent money. We could afford to support the two of us. But if we had to add a child into that, that wasn't going to happen. You know, it just it, it couldn't work out that way. So we were smart about what we did and kept going, okay? Then five years turned into 10 years. She had some trouble getting pregnant. At one point, we thought, well, we're just not going to have kids. It's not going to work out. And then I quit working at the tire center because I had a knee injury, and I went back to school. And as I'm going back to school, I'm in my second or third year, and I get a phone call that she's pregnant, right? But we were more prepared at that point in time than we were when we first got married. We had spent some time with each other. We had gotten to know each other. I don't care who you are. Like some people live together before they get married. It doesn't matter if you live together before you get married or not. But like you figure out what people are like. You figure out their 
pooping habits. You figure out their eating habits. You figure out their cleaning habits. You figure out like all these things that you didn't know about someone else and you only knew about yourself because guess what? You live by yourself, basically. You did live with your family, you know, like before you were 18 or whatever, but you're figuring out things about this person that you didn't know. And, and my thought process was I want to get to know my wife before, you know, I get to have kids and throw that in there. Cause now we've got to figure out what's our parenting style going to be. How are we going to raise these kids? What are the things that we have? And it's never easy. It's never easy. If anyone tells you it's going to be easy, they're full of shit. My wife, it was the funniest thing. She liked to tell me, Oh, kids don't cost any money. She said that because she wanted kids, but I knew in my mind that was bullshit. And if you're a parent, you know that as well. But I, I just think it's, I think it was kind of funny that that was one of her uh, things that she'd say to me, you know, anyway, we had kids, right? So you struggle, you completely go through and you have to understand that where people are coming from. And it was interesting because I was having a conversation with Wolf K last night. And that's what kind of brought on all, all this stuff and how I'm relating this, because this is what I do, right? This book is a great book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People I, it, by Stephen Covey. I, I would tell you, go read it. You need to go read it. You just need to. And, and while you're doing it, think about the lessons and the habits and the talk and the things. Like You can use this as a resource to help you find that, but think about the way that you can relate that to your life. Maybe it already relates to your life like mine does. You might do these things because you just do them because you know to do them but it might help you give some clarification and then relate it to your life, right? So I was talking to my friend Wolf last night. He was the guest host a couple shows back. Friend of mine, he does all the clips and stuff like that. He's, I, have, I have a team, right? Him, he does the clips. He's built my website. He posts stuff for me on YouTube. Nikki Pab, who's a Patreon supporter, writes all the show notes. You know, The problem is, is this is something that I, I can't do alone and continue to keep doing it. And it, luckily, these people have helped me along the way and for little or no money. And they believe in me, and they want me to do it. So I appreciate that. Wolf, you know, I, I talked to him about, I was in Cancun. I said, hey, do you want a guest host? And he, he thought about it, and he kind of talked himself into it, and just, you know, just thought process, things like, what am I going to do? What topic are we going to talk, talk about? And you guys know me, right? Like, so you know who I am. And so you listen to me and I have this carry on attitude and who I am. And he's, he's a little bit different, right? And so we, we had the episode, we listened to it. It was really good, but I know Wolf. In the context that Wolf is speaking, I know him. And he said, well, what did you, you know, you're telling me it's great. You're telling me all these things, blah, 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 blah. Are there any criticisms or any things that I should work on? Are there any things that, I should know. And the conversation went back and forth. We were talking on signal, text, voice, those types of things. And um, it was interesting because he was open to criticism. And I think that a lot of people are not open to criticism. I think that's a problem because when you see criticism, you think of it as a negative thing, right? But if you apply this habit to criticism, seek first to understand, then to be. Wolf was seeking to understand what more could I do? What did I do good? What did I do bad? They can both be something that you can work on. But improvement cannot happen without criticism. Someone has to tell you how to fix whatever it is or thought process. And you have to be open to that criticism. You have to be open to receiving it. Because if you're not, you're never going to move forward. You may think that you're perfect and you're doing everything right. And that's fine. But what if you could improve it? And that's how I live my life, always trying to improve things, always trying to make it better, right? And it, like the podcast, right? Right now, this drives me crazy. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see I got a baby, I got to point the opposite way. I got a baby bass or a pack and play over there. I got my kids' books behind me. I got chair, I got shit all over the place that I don't need. And it's here because this is a temporary recording space and I have to get through that. But in my head, I'm thinking about, well, I can't improve this very much without spending a bunch of money out of my pocket. And I don't want to do that because I know that I'm building a house and I'm going to have a recording space and it's going to get better. And when I'm there, it's permanent. So everything that I add to that permanent space will be making it an improvement. So that's tough, right? 
it's tough to have to deal with that. But it's I know in my mind the things that I'm going to do. Just like with my parents talking about me being married, what can I do to improve the situation so that I don't fall in some of the same traps that they do? So I listen to them. I talk to them about things. Understand it. Now, it doesn't mean just because you listen to them and you they criticize you. And when I say criticize, everyone's like, oh, negative, negative. Criticism is a good thing. It can help you improve if you look at it. I'll say that again. Criticism is a good thing. Learn to accept criticism. Your whole life, you have been accepting it and you just do not know it. In school, when you took a test, the scorer is criticizing you based on whether you got the answer right or wrong, right? Simple as that. So if you got the answers wrong, what did you need to do? You needed to seek out a way to understand them. The only way to decide how to fix that is to work through the criticism so that you can be better at what it is. So learning how to answer the question correctly, right? Criticism. You write a book report, someone talks about the things that they're doing, criticism. Um, my English teacher had a book critique. Critique is criticism. What do you think about it? Criticism can be good and bad. And once you determine that and you can figure that out, you can fix it. If you want to fix it, it's up to you, right? You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't want to. That's up to you. So that's it. It's feedback, right? Good or bad. And I applauded Wolf. There's a reason why I like Wolf. Um, Jay, same thing. It's like you think that your friends, when I say surround yourself with like-minded people, you think that that means that they're going to agree with everything you say. That is not the case. And if they do, you are not challenged. And I'm sorry. I don't care. That's the problem with what's going on in this world right now. People disagree and cannot have a conversation about their disagreements and then still be friends. If you don't agree with me, and the big one is politics, right? I'm not going to talk about politics in general, but I'm going to talk about, or I'm going to talk about politics in general, but I'm not going to talk about, you know, affiliation or anything like that. I don't care what side you're on. If I have a conversation with you and you get all worked up about it because you don't understand, you don't get it, or you don't know why, and you can't convince me to think your way, that's a problem. We are free thinkers. We should be able to we should be able to have a conversation about something and you can understand where I'm coming from and then you can do what you want. Right? Seek first understand then be. That's how it all relates, okay? I had a conversation with someone about guns, right? Like guns is a big thing right now. And people automatically profile certain guns to think that they are different than other guns okay and it's interesting to me that if you really break it down and you really think about how a gun works or you have an understanding of a gun because you have to do the research to understand them then you would understand that there are similar guns that look one way but are the exact same thing and so if you understand that then you should understand that there are certain guns that are the same thing and they can do the same thing so if you want to ban this one because it looks this way then you want to ban this one even though it looks another way you know like so like a ar looks like they call it an assault rifle right that's not what it is it's a rifle right it's a semi-automatic rifle well they make semi-automatic rifles for hunting and they look different and they make semi-automatic rifles for um shotguns and they look different, right? And if you ever did your research and you looked at it, you would understand that people are saying, well, we need to ban this. Well, okay, if we need to ban this, then we need to ban everything else, right? But they keep camping on one thing. And someone that I had a conversation was like, well, that's a high-precision killing machine. Well, every gun is a high-precision killing machine. So it's not a valid argument. And like I said, this is a conversation that doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. If you, if you do your research, if you know the things that you know and you know the truth, then you can make an informed decision. But if you're just saying that's a black gun with a long, a long uh, magazine with a scope on it and people use those in the army, that's what it's for, to kill people, then you're wrong. So think about that. Do the research. And that's what I love about Jay is that Jay challenges me every single day on everything. 
I will say one thing, and then he'll go, okay, well, what about this? Let's play the devil advocate. What about this? See the other side. Don't just see your side. Think about it. If you're going to spend all this time working on one side, you need to work on the other side before you can make an informed decision. Maybe it'll change your mind. Maybe it won't. I don't care, but at least know what you're talking about. So understand first, okay? I think that that's a, that's a good place to end on. And, and I hope that this habit is something that, you know, will help you start to think a little bit deeper in your life. Because I think that we don't. I don't think that we think as deep as we should. And reading books, seeking knowledge, having those conversations with people you, you agree with and don't agree with are very important. And this society has lost objectivity because they are not being objective about what they tell us. The media is a huge one. Someone is paying the media. Someone is paying the government. Someone is paying them, no matter what side of the aisle they are on, to say the things that they say. A great example of this is uh, Michelle Obama. Okay, in in the era when they were the teachers there, the first lady always tries to go out and have kind of a cause and do something. It seems like Michelle Obama's cause was, I want to have healthier foods in schools for kids. Okay. And this is a true story, so you can go look this up if you want. This is what happened, okay? So she goes in, and she starts to readjust everything, right? We need more vegetables. We need more healthy meals for these kids. We need things that are healthy for them, okay? One of the things was cutting out pizza out of the, the meal plan at school. They're going to take pizza out. I don't know, like in my school, when I, was in, when I was in middle school, we started getting pizza and it was always like Domino's. Like they would actually order Domino's pizza. They'd serve that every single day. Kids would eat it. They'd get them to eat their lunch, right? Whatever. Well, pizza was one of the things that she wanted to knock out of there. We're not going to do pizza anymore, okay? Pizza's bad for you. And if you think about it, like the way that you eat pizza just might determine that how bad it is for you. And it's not, you know, I'm not saying don't eat pizza. But if you had a healthier choice of something else, pizza would be on the low end and that, you know, like a salad would be on the other end, right? So let's knock pizza out, whatever. Well, the number one pizza maker in the country is Schwann's, okay? Schwann's makes pizza for the country. And you think, well, the Schwann's truck, right? He drives around and drops off pizza. How could that be? Well, they don't make just stuff for them. They, they push out everything for everyone, okay? So... A box of pizza that you get from a, re- a from a grocery store, a frozen pizza, or the pizza that they're using in the schools, could be considered. Um, it could be made by Schwann's because they're like the largest supplier. And I'll I'll try and find the documentary that I watch this on and show it to you, or put it in the notes so you know. But the reality of the situation was Schwann's comes to her and says, "You know, we can't do this. You have to figure out because they made this new food pyramid and pizza wasn't on there." Well, they figured out a way in this new food pyramid that they had to make pizza a vegetable because it had tomato sauce. So how do you think they figured that out? Someone paid her to do that. And when the pushback came that she was going to do this, Schwann's got pissed and then they, you know, lobbied and made, you know, paid someone off to get them to do that. It's a true story. So go check it out go look at it, Google it, do the research. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're calling pizza a vegetable on this new food pyramid, and it is not. But people's minds can be changed based on whatever the situation is. And I can guarantee you, whatever side of the aisle you're on, that has happened either way. Our politicians just, they whatever way they get paid, they move that way. I would like to believe that there's people that are not that way, but it doesn't matter. So be objective about the things that you think. Seek both sides of the equation so that you can understand instead of just pulling the trigger and dying on the sword on something that may or may not be true. It may not change your mind. It may not change your thinking, no matter what it is. It may not sway you one way or another, but know what you're talking about. And I will tell you this, the places where you seek that information are not going to be on Fox, NBC, Facebook, 
Instagram, that information is going to be found by doing the research, finding the articles. Thanks for hanging out with me. Next habit we'll be talking about in the next episode will be a great one as well. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success.